Hello everybody, my name is Lexi and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be talking about five beginner tips for Harvest Moon Winds of Anthos. Uh, there shouldn't be that many spoilers. I have beaten the game at this point. I've put in like 40 hours. So here are just some tips that I've picked up that I figured you might want to use. I also recommend watching Eli the Gamer's videos. He, They have one about the 11 mistakes you should avoid. And I think they just released another one. I don't entirely remember, but I did see the, the thumbnail, but I haven't watched it yet. Anyway, you should go watch their videos too because they're helpful. Um, anyway, <laughs> I will have timestamps in the description if you want to just like read what the points are or just skip around and see if, uh, you know, there's not something you already know. Or if you just want to hear a certain part of me rambling, that, that also works. I'm not going to complain. It's watch time. <laughs> Tip number one. It's more like multiple tips. So this is a better understanding of the dowsing rod mechanic. So if you are unaware, when you're in the mines and you press the B button, you use the dowsing rod, which basically makes on your mini map, all of these circles show up. These circles mean things. The uh, circles can help you find ladders, or if you're in a mine that has pitfalls, it can show you where the pitfalls are. It also shows you where ore is. They are very important. To, it's very important to use this mechanic. So first of all, you don't waste all your stamina just mining everywhere. But another thing I've learned is that the smaller the circle, the rarer the ore slash the types of ore you will get. When it's a super small circle, Nine times out of 10, it's either gold or silver. I, I think I've gotten titanium from it once, but I'm not entirely sure. Usually like medium sized circles have uh, ores that you can access by that point in the mines. So if you're like on floor 50 and you can access things like sapphires, you can get them that way. Or it, weirdly, in some of the mines, the only thing I ever get from that is titanium, which is fine by me. I always need titanium. But just keep that in mind next time you're mining. It helps you focus on what you actually want to get. Tip number two. Cooking is very helpful. You should use it. So in some videos I've seen of people playing Winds of Anthos, they will have like a massive stack of apples like someone would in Breath of the Wild. And every time they run low on stamina, they just eat an entire like pound of apples. And that works. Don't get me wrong. Stamina regen is stamina regen. But you have much, you will re regenerate stamina faster if you cook food. Especially one item meals, really great because they go from being half a heart of stamina to a full heart of stamina. And that makes all the difference because it's less food you have to eat. You, you have to eat. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to cut it out. I feel like my, my rambling adds fun things. Anyway, you can get some really easy basic recipes from the first town's restaurant where you meet Neil and you make that turnip stew for the first harvest sprite. You can get things like fried egg or coffee. I highly recommend eating coffee. Coffee is like the number one thing my character eats, which probably not good for my character, but it's great for me because you can get tons of coffee beans like all over the damn place. So start cooking. It'll be great. I promise. <laughs> Tip number three. If you are struggling for money, this is for you. You need to unlock the third town, which basically you have to finish uh, the first town. You have to get it up to two stars. You have the whole thing with the harvest sprite, and then you go through and you bring everybody back, and then you can go on to the next town. The next town is a seaside town, and it is the number one place for fishing. Oh my god, it's great. It, once you hit higher levels of fishing, you can get two starfish there that sell for like four grand a pop. And it's great. You, there are, there are multiple places to fish here. There's like a great pier where there's like at the end of it, there's usually three or four fish there. There's like an X of piers over on the other side, closer to where the volcano is, that has two different spots that are great. You can usually get mahi-mahi or, uh, 
tuna. I'm trying to think of the name. You can get mahi mahi or tuna here. Uh, you can also get sea bass, which if you're playing Animal Crossing, I know you can just hear in your head, no way, it's at least a C plus. Uh, you want sea bass in this game. They sell for at least a grand. And, you know, they're, they're really easy to reel in compared to other fish in the area. They don't fight as much. I strongly recommend if you are desperate for cash going and fishing there basically every single day, catching all 13 or so fish that you can get there and sell it, you'll have tons of money in no time. It won't even be a problem anymore to the point where I buy like thousands of fish bait at once because I just know that I'm going to need it and money is not a problem for me anymore. <laughs> tip number four, just general exploration tips for you. Number one, if you are not going to the mines and not planning on mining in any way, shape, or form, have some basic building materials in your inventory. Things like board lumber, square lumber, the material stone that you can get, maybe some copper, I mean bronze. Is it bronze or is it copper in this game? I can't remember off the top of my head. It switches, the orange one. <laughs> Once you have, just have that with you at all points in time, because as you're adventuring, you will need to rebuild bridges and they will always need at least most of what I just said, either if it's just the boards and the, the material, or sometimes it needs copper. The weirdest one I've seen is it needed a very specific hybrid of flowers, which was dumb. <laughs> so... Just keep that with you when you're adventuring so that you can keep adventuring because nine times out of ten, if there's a bridge you need to build, there is a warp point on the other side of that bridge and it's going to taunt you relentlessly on the map until you get it. I apologize if you can hear noises. Uh, it just, there's a full-blown rainstorm going on right now in the middle of my recording. Um... I also recommend finding as many of those warp points as you possibly can because they unlock parts of the map and it makes it so much easier to navigate because you can see on the map where like the special little land is in the water that you can walk on so you can go get those power wisps that have been taunting you in Providence for the entire game and then you just found out where they are because you finally looked at the map this morning and you figured out where it was. I'm not bitter. <laughs> I am not bitter. I'm not bitter. Anyway, bring building materials and adventure. Probably have a horse. It makes everything go faster. And finally, tip number five. Since this is a beginner video, do the main story. Do not put it off, okay? The longer it takes for you to do the main story, the longer it's going to take for you to have access to all sorts of things. You can't get married, you can't have a romance, you can't have any of that until you have finished the main story. You can't uh, access, you can't level up towns past a certain point until you have finished the main story, which means you are basically stuck with these basic tools to a certain point. Uh, once you hit level two in, in a town, you can usually upgrade a tool or two with the exception of the third town, the one I told you to go fish in, you unlock a fishing rod as part of the main story for that. So I would recommend doing that at least. But it's just so much easier if you do the main story consistently, even if it's slowly. Just do it. I know you may not want to, but do it. <laughs> it It's not that hard and if anything, you know, it, I always have thought of it because I've now beaten it. I thought of it more as the like getting an, an an Animal Crossing island up to three stars. That's this game's story. OK, it's teaching you mechanics. It's doing like some little fetch quests. It'll maybe take a couple of days, but, you know, it won't take that long. And then you have like free reign to do whatever you want. So... That is something I recommend you do. Finish that story. Um, so there were five, albeit kind of rambly, tips about uh, beginner things for Harvest Moon Winds of Anthos. That storm that like showed up halfway through tip number four is now gone. I have no idea what just happened. <laughs> I love living in this state. It's not Florida, but we have the same problems. Anyway, 
I hope you enjoyed this different sort of video. I don't, I've never really made a top five tips or whatever before, but I've been really enjoying playing Harvest Moon, Winds of Anthos, especially because I've been having really bad pots flare ups. And so I can sit in my bed and play on my Switch, which is how I, you know, beat the game, which is how I got this footage. I used my Switch for it, which also means if the footage really randomly kind of looks <laughs> a bit sketchy, that's that's partially why it's, it's going off the Switch. And for whatever reason, my, my game is pretty buggy right now. But uh, I am going to hopefully get this out and edit it. And then I'm going to go take some headache medicine because my head hurts and the world is upside down right now. So uh, my name has been Lexi. Has been. My name is Lexi. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you all next video.